And now finally by popular demand, I'm sorry this took so long, I just needed a lot more time, we have Darmanitan. This Pokemon is among the most popular introduced in Generation 5. Those who played black and white in-game are big fans of this Pokemon, as it mows through nearly everything in one hit. You just have to get past all those times Darumaka misses an otherwise accurate move thanks to Hustle before it evolves. Today we'll be examining if Darmanitan was similarly hit or miss in the competitive scene. And so, we ask, how good was Darmanitan actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Darmanitan is naturally one of the most brutally powerful Pokemon in the game, with its already enormous attack complemented by the sheer force ability, which powers up its powerful stab flare blitz even further. Slap a choice ban or life orb on with the latter not even providing extra recoil thanks to sheer force, and you have one of the strongest attacks possible. And that's before you add a sun boost on top of it, because as luck would have it, Darmanitan was introduced in the same generation that Drought was in OU. The options for taking this flare blitzkrieg and sun were pretty much restricted to Heatran or changing the weather with Tyranitar or Polito. However, all three of these Pokemon were absolutely destroyed by Darm's superpower, so it was a tough choice between risking them and letting something else get burned to a crisp by Sun Boosted Flare Blitz. Even bulky resists like Garchomp and Rotom Wash would get absolutely eviscerated. Darmanitan's speed was a bit of a letdown in such a fast metagame, but it was so naturally strong that it didn't exactly need the extra power boost from Choice Band or Life Orb. It could fix its speed issue with Choice Scarf. Suddenly, being able to outrun and superpower the Terrakion or U-turn on the Latios that would otherwise KO it or chase it out. Now, there's no denying that switching into Darmanitan's monstrous attacks was a fearsome prospect. The problem was that it offered nothing but literal firepower. It was incredibly frail and weak to Stealth Rock, meaning it had an incredibly difficult time switching in. Plus, despite all its power, it struggled to consistently do damage once it did manage to switch in thanks to the hostile conditions of the OU metagame. Rain teams naturally stifled it, and Darm would have to manage to come in while Sun was up to pose any sort of threat. Not an easy task given its meager defensive profile, depriving it of opportunities to do so in conjunction with its limited window before Politoed came back in. Sand teams weren't able to weaken its Flare Blitz, where Darmanitan had a difficult time against them as well. It struggled to consistently leave the opponent damaged between its limited switch and opportunities and the difficult task of choosing between Flare Blitz and Superpower, while doing almost nothing against teams with Jellicent if Sun wasn't up. Sure, if Sun was up, then Jellicent would get destroyed. But that scenario was dependent on successfully bypassing the same dilemma Darm had against Rain. And even then, if Jellicent was paired with Heatran, as it so often was, then even that wouldn't be enough. To make matters even worse, Sand teams tended to load up on multiple Protect users, including Darm's would-be favorite target, Ferrothorn, thus completely ruining choice variants. Running Life Orb wouldn't do anything to fix Darm's other issues. Offensive variants of both Rain and Sand teams were too fast, and thus gave it just about zero room to threaten anything, while Scarf sets would struggle to break through more defensively inclined teams. As fun as it was to spam sun-boosted flare blitzes with Darmanitan, it wasn't anywhere near reliable. To put it into perspective, Victini largely outclassed Darmanitan as a physical sun nuke once it received V-Create. Compared to Darm, it had speed, bulk, and added resistances from its secondary psychic typing, as well as Bolt Strike to really threaten even the bulkiest Politoed. However, even Victini couldn't hack it in OU, largely for the same reasons as Darm, like the stealth rock weakness, the underwhelming speed, the prediction-based difficulty of finding opportunities against, and being able to damage the dominant rain and sand teams alike. Sun teams simply had better, more reliable options. Even the quadruple stealth rock weak Volcarona was a more consistent choice. As a result, both Darmanitan and Victini fell to Yuyu. It was a shame given how much hype Darmanitan received at the beginning of the generation, but no one could really say that it was at all viable. Luckily for Darm, it was a threat and a half in Yuyu. It wasn't outclassed by Victini at all. It was a much better Scarfer, as its fire stab didn't drop its speed and defenses, meaning it wasn't vulnerable to pursuit, and its non-fire stab moves hit a lot harder. Plus, Victini had better things to be doing than scarfing, such as abusing its excellent special move pool. It actually made an excellent darn partner, as it could lure and destroy Rhyperior with Grass Knot, allowing Scarf Darmanitan to sweep more easily. Darmanitan wasn't solely relegated to a scarf set, though. Its life orb and choice band sets were vicious as well. It wasn't outclassed by Victini at all, as Victini's V-Create speed drop meant it would be checked 
attacked by prominent physical wall Gliger, whereas Darmanitan had no such drawbacks and would simply bowl it over. This kind of interaction was commonplace against a multitude of would-be checks to Victini, such as Suicune that Darm would easily run right through. The lack of vulnerability to pursuit was also of high importance, meaning unlike with Victini, the opponent couldn't force a KO in revenge, after Darmanitan took something out. Darmanitan was an excellent piece of many different kinds of offensive teams. It was particularly brutal alongside Spikes, as it meant its few checks crumbled even more quickly to it. Darmanitan was also an integral component of the Volt turn teams that popped up later in the generation, chaining together switch moves for constant pressure on the opponent, wearing them down to the point where Scarf Darmanitan's Flare Blitz would disintegrate everything left. One of the Volt turn members was Zatu, who reliably prevented Stealth Rock and was thus allowed to switch in and spam U-turn with impunity. Finally, although this was gimmicky and tough to pull off, Darmanitan could potentially pull one of the scariest sets in the game, a substitute Belly Jump Salakberry set, with the speed boost providing the late game cleaning potential of the Choice Scarfer, while a plus 6 attack Darmanitan will one hit KO anything that isn't an unaware Quagsire. Of course, Darmanitan stuck to its more reliable sets, but we did want to pay lip service to this variant. Overall, Darmanitan was an excellent, important offensive Pokemon throughout Gen 5 UU, with its unique role in the metagame providing and fleshing out depth in the tier's identity. And also, quick disclaimer before we move on, you may have noticed we didn't mention Zen Mode Darmanitan at all. Unfortunately, this will be a reoccurring theme throughout the video, because at no point in singles history has Zen Mode Darmanitan ever had any sort of competitive success or relevance. And that's a shame, because Zen Mode Darmanitan is incredibly cool design-wise, but that's the reality. The 6th generation got faster and stronger and nobody gave Darmanitan a single thought as far as OU was concerned. Physical fire types were in no short supply with the additions of Talonflame and Mega Charizard X, who, unlike Darm, were capable of switching into opposing Pokemon. Thus, Darmanitan dropped to UU once again. But this time around, it was mostly passed over. And for good reason. It was almost completely outclassed by Entei. Sure, Entei wasn't as strong as Darm, but it had several incredible qualities that made it a better choice just about every time. The most notable was Sacred Fire, or as Yu was littered with Pokemon that could take strong physical fire moves, as there were an absolute ton of excellent bulky moves, as well as Hydreigon and Mega Aerodactyl. However, they really did not appreciate being burned while doing so, and Sacred Fire did just that. Plus, while it didn't reach Darmanitan's heights, Entei wasn't exactly a slouch in the power department. It had several other excellent qualities. It was much, much bulkier, allowing it to take a hit in a pinch, and had improved speed. It also had tremendous priority and extreme speed, allowing it to threaten even faster Pokemon. There was really no reason to use Darm over Entei, especially since the latter proved itself to be one of the best Pokemon in the tier. Entei wasn't even the only superior offensive fire type in the tier. Infernate was quite excellent as well. But sadly, this was somehow not enough for Darmanitan to drop to Aryu, because it would have utterly destroyed that tier, and that would have been entertaining. But it wasn't so lucky. The sixth generation was completely forgettable for our fiery friend. Dermanitan was once again unable to establish a UU niche in Generation 7, since Infernate was back and stronger than ever with the addition of Z moves. Luckily, this time around, Dermanitan dropped to Aryu. To say it utterly destroyed the tier would be an understatement, as it would be more accurate to say it scorched, smashed, slammed, and slaughtered everything in its path with a searing strength and savagery whose full scope was nearly incomprehensible to the mortal mind. Its speed was solid for the metagame, which in conjunction with the plethora of switch moves its teammates could viably wield gave it plenty of opportunity to unleash the unholy horror of its Flare Blitz. Its coverage also allowed it to crush the few Pokemon actually capable of withstanding its moves. The best answer, Rhyperior, could take Flare Blitzes all day, but it wouldn't want to eat Super Power or Earthquake. Plus, when in doubt, Darmanitan could just U-turn to chuck its switch, making it more vulnerable for later, and bring in another huge threat, such as Choice Band Sneasel. It helped that U-turn smacked another would-be check, Slowbro, incredibly hard. Darmanitan was far, far too powerful for Aryu, and was quickly banned. Sadly, this meant it was doomed to be continuously outclassed by Infernape in Yuyu. Thus, it didn't see any usage again for the rest of the generation. However, it could wear its RUBL status with pride. Nobody who played Darmanitan's RU will forget how its searing, blistering flare blitzes raised everything in sight, and its brief tenure in the tier was testament to its torridity. Darmanitan is so close to having everything it needs to be a demolition machine on the VGC field. Massive attack and sheer force boosted rock slides are a disgusting combination, enough to make Choice Scarf Darmanitan something that could disrupt most VGC teams. However, Darmanitan's weaknesses are just enough to push it out of relevance. For one thing, that aforementioned Choice Scarf is near mandatory on Darm. Base 95 speed is good, and in singles, it allows Darm to win many matchups against tankier mons. However, VGC is populated by quite a few base 100 mons, and the fact of the matter 
is that with four Pokemon on the field at a time, Darmanitan is often likely to be outsped by something. That's where we get to the root of Darmanitan's problems. It's frailty. Darmanitan's terrible defenses compared with one of the worst defensive typings you could ask for in VGC. Darmanitan is liable to get knocked out by a stiff breeze, not to mention the wide assortment of super effective spread moves it has to fear, such as Rock Slide, Muddy Water, and Earthquake. What's more, while Darmanitan's Rock Slides were fearsome, its main stab move in Flare Blitz came with the added penalty of recoil, meaning its longevity was, well, not its strong point. In exchange, you get a Mon with fearsome power, sure, but Darmanitan wasn't the only Pokemon that could bring that onto your team. Darmanitan languished in the shadows for all of its debut VGC generation, never making an impact, and to be honest, that's been its story for almost all of its VGC history, outside of a few scattered results. In our Genesect video, we mentioned how thanks to download, Genesect was effectively running Choice Band and Choice Scarf on the same set, or how its Choice Band sets effectively received a second Choice Band. The top comment on that video was the happy dino asking how foreshadowing was Galarian Darmanitan actually, and we just wanted you all to know that we noticed and we remembered. Anyway, here we are, the big one. Generation 8 gave Darmanitan an Ice-type Galarian form, which turned out to be one of the most comically overpowered Pokemon in history. Regular Darmanitan is already incredibly strong with its monstrous attack stat, combined with sheer force to boost its Flare Blitz even further. So what does a Pokemon like that need? Why, to become even stronger, of course, Galarian Darmanitan received one of the most awesomely named abilities ever, Gorilla Tactics, which is essentially a built-in choice band, and this powers up all of its attacks, not just moves with secondary effects. For Darmanitan, this would be its stab move in both forms, and it's significantly stronger than Sheer Force's built-in life orb. And unlike Sheer Force, Gorilla Tactics also doesn't remove its move's secondary effect. While regular Darmanitan's Flare Blitz would never burn, Galarian Darmanitan's Icicle Crash was fully capable of using its 30% flinch rate. As if it wasn't difficult enough to tank its hits already, you also had to be worried about it. The flinch, I mean. Hereafter, Galarian Darmanitan will be referred to as Garmanitan, a name we did not make up for the record. And yes, this does mean that it gets shortened to Garm. Anyway, Garmanitan was instantly one of the most terrifying Pokemon in OU. There was absolutely nothing it couldn't destroy. And it's crazy how being able to essentially hold Choice Scarf and Band or two Choice Bands will do that. Especially to a Pokemon with 140 attack, a great stab move, excellent coverage, and U-turn to boot. Scarf sets zip past and rip through faster offensive teams, while defensive teams could not withstand the mind-melting power of Choice Band. Garmanitan was particularly absurd while Dynamax was allowed, but even after Dynamax was banned, it continued to destroy quite literally everything. It helps that Ice is an excellent attacking type, but Garm would have been absurd no matter what stab it had. After all, its banded unstabbed Earthquake always cleanly one hit KO'd even the most physically defensive Toxapex. So it didn't take long before Garmanitan was banned from OU. Fun fact about Garmanitan. We said earlier that Zen Mode Darmanitan had never had any sort of single success, and that was true. But that was regular Darmanitan. Now, this mostly applied for Galarian Darmanitan as well. It used Gorilla Tactics 99% of the time, since that was its Uber Maker. But for the first time ever, Zen Mode Garmanitan has an astonishing 160 base attack and a blazing 135 base speed. Thus, some players experimented with the Sub Select Belly Drum set, which would activate Zen Mode and unleash a sweep of cataclysmic proportions. This set was unreliable as well as being the definition of overkill. On a Pokemon, Pokemon that certainly didn't need any help destroying quite literally the entire metagame, but we wanted to mention it regardless. Plus, I mean, look at it. Anyway, regular old Gorilla Tactics Garmanitan was alright in its new home of Ubers. Its lack of defensive utility made it harder to justify than an OU, especially since its speed wasn't as impressive, but it still plowed through everything. Being able to so brutally destroy Eternatus with Icicle Crash was excellent. Garmanitan often made use of Dynamax, which crucially allowed it to tank a hit and KO something in return, as well as being able to switch moves. Those days are sadly no longer, as Dynamax has been banned from Ubers. However, Garmanitan had already fallen out of favor at this point, as the increased Pokedex brought on by the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra had not been kind to it. That said, at its beginning, the 8th generation as a whole really belonged to Garmanitan. As for regular Darmanitan, it has spent Sword and Shield going on another lower tier journey, settling into Aryu. It was incredibly strong once again, and with Drought, it was incredibly powerful. A Sun Team with banned Darmanitan and Spec Solar Power Charizard wouldn't be very good defensively, but they were completely unwallable offensively. Darmanitan was considered by a few to be banned worthy due to its insane power in Sun, but it didn't quite get there. Venusaur was determined to be the greater evil of Drought teams in Isle of Armor, and Darmanitan lived to Sun Flare 
Blitz again. That is until the Crown Tundra came, and Drought was banned as a whole. Darmanitan currently continues to reside in Aryu, where it is a solid presence but not overwhelming. There are plenty of ways to keep it in check fairly reliably, though this is not to say it isn't immensely threatening, because it is. Entei is back, but the burn nerf means its sacred fire is no longer nearly as crippling as before, and thus it does not completely outclass Darm anymore. Gen 8 also gave Darmanitan Shrik, which gives it even more depth. Now even Scarf sets can completely ruin would-be walls. Overall, Darmanitan looks to continue establishing itself as a powerful but not overpowered presence in Gen 8 RU, and we think that's just fine. Galarian Darmanitan is, of course, one of the most fearsome singles Pokemon ever created. Darmanitan's icy variant brings that same sledgehammering power to VGC. Since most regular Darmanitan were running Choice Scarf anyways, Galarian Darmanitan's use of the item is near guaranteed, especially since it's already Choice Locked anyways. Garmanitan also has the benefit of having Icicle Crash as its stab move over Flare Blitz, meaning it can spam its strongest attack without fear of whittling itself down. However, all these pros still can't quite circumvent Garmanitan's most notable shortcoming, its bulk. While a pure ice typing isn't as vulnerable to spread moves as pure fire, it's still not the most desirable defensive typing, especially with those less than great defensive stats. There's also a fact that Garmanitan would lose its Choice Scarf boost if Dynamax, and it often couldn't make much use of the extra bulk anyways. However, Garmanitan's ice typing was also a boon in some ways. Early VGC 2020 was overrun by Togekiss and Dragapult, meaning Scarf Garm could be a targeted removal machine. It had so much power it could potentially one shot Dragapult through Dynamax. Even with the troubles Garmanitan had, that was a hard upside to pass up. In a demonstration of Garmanitan's potential, Sage and Park managed to win one of VGC 2020's first competition, the Victory Road World Champion Invitational. Sage went hard into offense, and his Garmanitan was no exception to that. Really, this mon wasn't complex. Almost all of them were max speed and attack with a choice scarf, and a move pull of Icicle Crash, Rock Slide, and two of Flare Blitz, Superpower, or Earthquake. And in Sage own words, it was fast, strong, and had no second plan. Credit to Sajin though for finding one other secondary use for his Garm. With Earthquake, it could proc his Duraludon's weakness policy in exchange for a hefty chunk of health. After Sajin's win at the Invitational, multiple other players tried out Garmanitan, and it saw a good amount of success at early online Galar Weeklies, hosted by VGC Stats, with a combined six top eight appearances between Galar Weeklies three to six. Shoutouts to the following people whose names I will proceed to butcher. Barstos, Nausiek, Ekert, Maddie, Maddie Moo Morgan, Skizzle, Vism, Fuchs, the Yodeler, and a Korean player in Galar Weekly 5 who we don't know the name of. Players were attracted to Garm's ability to take out the aforementioned Togekiss and Dragapult core, and with its coverage, it also threatened Tyranitar, Exedro, and some other threats. It was still quite low in usage, between 5 and 10%, but it was a threat most teams still had to prep for. Nevertheless, a select few players gave Garm some results towards the end of the in-person events, namely in Dallas, where Yi Hui's Shu placed 13th and Daniel Thorpe took 9th. Yi Hui kitted out his Garmanitan with a Focus Sash to ensure it could get at least one hit most of the time, and additionally found an upside in its poor defenses. With it guaranteed to be removed soon, it could switch in the back half of its team for free, a trick room squad that appreciated Garm softening up opposing threats. However, as the meta developed and other strategies cropped up, Garmanitan usage dwindled rapidly. Trick room, Charizard, Rotom W, Arcanine, there were lots of mons that were bad news for Garmanitan, and once the available Pokemon expanded to include G-Max Lapras, not to mention Sun, Garmanitan fell out of the meta completely, as its old downsides came back to haunt it. Overall, Garmanitan is a shining example of just how different the qualities for success in VGC and singles can be. A meta-defining Pokemon in one format can easily be an afterthought in the other. And that's it, so how good was Darmanitan actually? Well, it's no surprise that Darmanitan was introduced in the region based on America, as its playstyle takes clear influence from American football. All it wants to do is blitz, and with its monstrous power, who would want it to do anything else? Well, despite said monstrous power, it's always been a lower tier Pokemon. A meager defensive profile will do that for you, no matter how strong you are. Here at False Swipe Gaming, we call this the Rampardos theorem. Sure, Darmanitan's higher speed made it much better than Rampardos, but the concept remains applicable. It had middling success throughout its lower tier generation. It was great in its inaugural generation of Yu Yu, but fell off afterwards once it had to compete with Infernape and Sacred Fire Entei. It couldn't muster more than a brief but enjoyable stint in Aryu, where it terrorized the competition before returning to its status as unusable in Yu Yu. All that changed in Generation 8, where it received a staggeringly powerful Galarian form that was the most blatant exhibit of Game Freak favoritism since Charizard and Mewtwo got two Mega Evolutions. They were cleanly intent on doing everything 
everything possible to ensure Darmanitan would see competitive success. They did this a little too well, as Galarian Darmanitan, or Garmanitan, or Garm, is one of the most astonishingly overpowered Pokemon of all time, and as such only had a limited window for OU domination, before it was sent to the wolf-laden pastures of Ubers. Garm even had a brief niche in Ubers for a spell, and of course, Garm was still a threat people had to account for in the early VGC 2020. Meanwhile, its Unovan counterpart has settled into a nice niche in RU. So overall, despite its struggles, Darmanitan has had a solid competitive career. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Darmanitan? Would you buff it to make it better in VGC? Would you nerf it to make it go back to OU? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.